Fel rwy wedi crybwyll ei eisoes, yr hyn sy'n allweddol i ni yw pwysleisio mae taith yw hon. Taith llywelwn i ein curriculum yn esblygu a hynny drwy dreialu, cymryd ambell risg, dwy'n ambell syniad ysgolion eraill, a das i chydig mwy ac yn y blan. Mae cynnydd a boddhad ein disgyblion yn greiddiol i bob dim, gyda'r cyfle i ni fanteisio ar dim lwr ar cyfan i'n cydestyn ni yma. Yn fwy na dim, mae hon yn daith i'w fwynhau, a dyna yw a fydd profiad ni yma yn Ysgol Garddol. On our engagement visits, we still talk to schools where they talked about where they moved too quickly towards this content without considering their vision well enough first. In these cases, and we have mentioned this in previous webinars, sometimes schools had moved too quickly to approaches such as, such as thematic approaches or grouping subject disciplines together too quickly. And what we found is this often led to superficial approaches to learning. And because learning hadn't been thought of initially, there were links being made between subjects, disciplines and areas um, that weren't always making sure pupils made the best progress. And these schools told us they had to take a step back and rethink the design process. They've ensured that they've helped teachers to move beyond thinking about how they might teach to also helping them think how they might enact that practice in their classrooms. In addition to this, where we see strong practice, leaders, leaders recognise the importance of subject-specific pedagogies, and they enable their subject leaders and teachers to consider how they will secure progress through strong teaching in their own discipline, and then where appropriate through across an area of learning and experience. In a few schools, they've not always made the link between strong teaching and successful curriculum delivery. In these examples, leaders have moved teachers to developing the, their curriculum without first supporting them to develop their approaches to teaching. And this often results in a low quality curriculum design process as teachers are not supported well enough to think about the learning that pupils need from the outset of their planning. And in these cases, we tend to see a series of tasks that are planned that don't enable pupils to make sufficient progress or to build on their prior learning. But the first thing I was ever taught when I went into teaching 25 years ago was that you're going to learn every single day and if you're not learning then you're not doing yeah. your job properly um, and you know I come to school and I, I, I find something new every single day. I think the main lesson that I would give to other practitioners is to make the time to actually do cluster working. We're all busy people, schools are an extremely busy place and it's hard to get out of school and find out what other people are doing but the benefits are absolutely amazing. You know you can gain so much from, from other schools in the cluster so make sure that you make the time to do that. Hefyd yn edrych ar ddylunio y cwricwlwm, da ni wedi llwyddo i greu datganiad uh, ein gweledigaeth ni ar gyfer cwricwlwm i Gymru, da ni wedi dod ar rhanddeiliad at i gilydd uh, mae'n bwysig bod y gymuned yn rhan uh, o lunio y datganiad yma, da ni'n teimlo y plant hefyd bod llais y plant i'w glywed a'i weld yn y datganiad. Da ni wedi bod yn edrych ar yn gwerthoedd ni uh, fel ysgol. Da ni'n edrych ar diwylliant ar y gymuned. Da ni'n trio cyfleu naws ag ethos unigryw yn ysgol ni yn y datganiad yma. Um, ac wedyn, wrth gwrs, da ni'n symud ymlaen wedyn ni ddylunio'r cwricwlwm uh, ar gyfer y misydd ddysgu a phrofiad y gyd a, wrth gwrs, y continuum. Once schools have established their vision for teaching and learning and evaluated their current provision, they began to trial aspects of curriculum design and pedagogy and evaluate and refine these trials. The starting point for schools in planning for these trials was varied. A majority started with the four purposes, others with the statements of what matters, and some it was started by improving the quality of teaching. Many schools visited were beginning to pay attention to developing authentic curriculum experiences that enable pupils to realize the four purposes and support their development of knowledge, skills, and experiences. This approach allows pupils to explore, discuss, and construct ideas in contexts that involve real world problems and projects that are relevant to them. 
As learning activities are planned, teachers placed importance on genuine opportunities rather than forced connections. Teachers spoke of thinking as much about what not to include or what belongs elsewhere, as well as what is most relevant. I think really our, our curriculum here in particular uh, is built around a triangulation of the four purposes uh, and not just that ambition at the age of 16 but what that quite rightly looks like for five, uh, eight and eleven year olds really through the primary sector and making sure then that there's, there's continuity with regards to them moving towards the secondary sector as well uh, and through progression steps four and five. Uh, the second aspect of our curriculum really is around pedagogy uh, and we build that around elements and distinct elements of a culture of learning uh, and expectations and a commitment to act from our staff and our community. And then the final element really then is that content, uh, the appropriate context for us uh, with regards to meeting the framework expectations of, of the national curriculum uh, and our context really as well here uh, in, in Houghton Primary School in Barry, but also for, for the children of Clankwick Major in Ascola Thraig. Uh, all of that is brought together by the fourth element of our curriculum, uh, which is very much well-being. Uh, and well-being really being a thread that runs through all of those three elements, uh, both as dis discrete and distinct learning, uh, but also as a wider concept of a whole school approach uh, to supporting learners' well-being and, and family well-being too.